if I hadn't failed and experienced failure, I would not have signed up to row across the ocean. So good preface. Um, <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm going to be rowing across the Pacific Ocean in 2024 uh, in a rowboat, uh, unsupported, and we're going to row from California to Hawaii and try to break a world record. Hey. Welcome back to the Athletes Podcast. This is episode 174 featuring Hannah Huppy, a chief operating officer, Team USA rower, ocean adventurer, gym owner, founder of ErgoFit, founder of a couple other businesses. She went to the Berlin School of Economics and Law. She is an elite coastal rower. Not familiar with the sport? Well, you're going to listen to it during this episode where you find out exactly what makes Hannah tick how she's going through changing the game, the sport, both beach sprint and coastal rowing. I learned about it a ton during this episode. I can't wait for you folks to hear from this incredible woman who is also a mother, also an incredible partner. She competes with her partner. There's really, frankly, not much that this woman can't do. It's been phenomenal being able to have these conversations with people on a weekly basis. Hannah is another incredible individual. I can't wait for you folks to listen to this episode of the show. I do want to make a quick shout out to Rooted because they sponsored this episode. They provide us with three times the electrolytes, 24 vitamins and minerals, as well as nine superfoods and probiotics. It's like taking your multivitamins, you get it in your nice shaker cup, you're good to go best thing for you. Try it out. Use the code AP18. Highly recommend it. I also recommend you listen to this entire episode so that you can get promo codes to get reduced prices on our merchandise that's now available at theathletespodcast.com. You'll also find our affiliate links to all of our other discounts, partnerships. We're doing a ton of work. We're building an app. Jordan's doing some incredible work. Phoenix is doing behind the scenes work. It's going. We're making some crazy progress and we can't thank you enough for being on the ride. Speaking of being on the ride, if you know, you're familiar with our athlete agreement where you simply have to hit that subscribe button for listening to one or more episodes. I know YouTube podcasts, you think they're free. This one's not. You just got to hit that subscribe button. Super easy. Everyone's doing it. Can't recommend it enough. Can't wait for you to listen to this episode featuring Hannah Huppy, number 174 on the Athletes Podcast. Here we go. See how Hannah Huppy's doing today. Thank you so much for coming on the Athletes Podcast. Thank you. Excited to be here. Yeah, well, you reached out. It was amazing. I love being able to have people and showcase their stories when they're actually reached out, engaged listeners on the show. Uh, You just came across it, obviously, learning about Snowboard Cross from Kennedy Justin, who was our previous episode on the show. But I'd love to share who you are as COO, athlete, super mom, social entrepreneur. Like, who is Hannah Huppy and how have you able to do all the things that you do in your day um yeah well (laughs) uh yeah my my cup runneth over (laughs) i feel like i'm bouncing back between a lot of things all the time but um yeah i am a mom to a three-year-old named hazel um and i am a u.s coastal rower so that's kind of my passion, I guess. And then I've also uh, kind of am in the entrepreneurship world. I've started some real estate tech companies. I'm currently working as the COO of a real estate tech company. And then um, our latest project is I'm opening up an indoor rowing studio with my husband and another partner here in New Orleans. So so yeah. crazy because you seem <laughs> to have everything going, uh, running at 100 miles an hour. How the heck do you get involved in the sport of coastal rowing in New Orleans? Like what got you into that sport? Yeah. So coastal rowing is kind of a weird thing in itself. Uh, It's not traditional rowing at all. And it's kind of like, I like to call it the, like the startup of rowing because it's not the like, you know, like corporate ladder of like traditional flatwater rowing, which is like a long, uh, a big institution that's kind of like fly by the seat of your pants, which is kind of how I like to live my life. (laughs) Um, And me and my husband got into it just because we wanted to try something new. We knew they had mixed rowing events. So um, that was kind of our thing. We're a couple who's rowed together. We've 
met at, on the Tulane rowing team our freshman year of college, and um, we've been rowing together ever since. And we thought coastal rowing would be a, a cool random challenge. We have a lake here that's basically very rough water, perfect for coastal rowing, and um, thought we'd give it a try. <laughs> I love that. I love that. How long have you been doing it? What sports did you grow up playing that like led you to this? Was it a natural fit? Water sports always growing up as a kid, or what? No, um, I hadn't even heard of rowing until I got to college. I I grew up actually in your neck of the woods. I I grew up in Bellingham, Washington. No way, a little um, PNW. So, I love it. Yeah, yeah, across the border. But my mom lives actually like on the border. Like the dog runs into Canada. You're <laughs> so, alive? Uh, yeah. So, nice. um, but yeah, I had no idea what rowing was in in high school um, or middle school. I grew up playing soccer, running, swimming, like a little bit of everything. Uh, I was always like the the kid who had like a lot of potential, but like never found my sport, I guess. Uh, so when I got to college, I joined the Tulane rowing team, which is actually a club team. Um, and I was like, immediately, I was like, ah, <laughs> this is what I've been waiting for. This is my sport. And I've basically been rowing ever, ever since. That's amazing. And like, when did you get the entrepreneurship bug? Was it at the same time? Did you always have it there? I'm fascinated at the crossover between entrepreneurship and athletics. I think there's a direct correlation. I think there's something crazy, like 95% of CEOs of fortune 500 or 5,000 businesses are former collegiate athletes, like some crazy oh, stats in that <laughs> sense. But when, when did you get that bug to, you know, accomplish both? Yeah, I guess, um, so after rowing all four years in undergraduate, I uh, did a little rowing in DC, but kind of needed a little break. And I went to graduate school in Berlin, Germany, mm -hmm. where I didn't row. Um, but that's kind of where I, I started working for a, like, a marketing software company, which was a startup and got a little taste of the entrepreneur life and was like, oh yeah, this is for me. Um, and when I moved back to New Orleans, I guess kind of a little bit entrepreneurial too, there was no rowing club for adults. It was just the Tulane rowing team. That was it. So oh. uh, my husband and I, uh, with a few other people, rebuilt New Orleans Rowing Club. Uh, we got a new location on, on the bayou and got boats and started programming. We uh, started a junior rowing team, master's team, learned to row and we're basically all all in um, with New Orleans Rowing Club, uh, while also, you know, working. <laughs> Being a mom, like you know, having and, a relationship. Yeah, with, well, know, that came that. later, but uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and yeah, we kind of like built the club, and then now we've kind of passed it off and kind of moved on to doing more of this coastal stuff and um, our indoor rowing venture that we're about to start. So. What was uh, school like in Berlin as a American? Um, it was, I, I really liked it. It was definitely um, such a good experience. Uh, I, one thing I did not like was the cold. So I was like, nope, not going to live here. That's for mm -hmm. sure. But one of my best friends who was on the rowing team in uh, New Orleans at Tulane. She was German. So I went and lived with her. So I kind of had a little bit of like an insider experience. So, um, but it was great. It, it definitely exposed me to like a completely different culture and different people. And I've got friends for life and um, I'll definitely always feel like that's a, a big part of my, my story. Is there a uh, one highlight or one hardest part that you look back on and you're like, oh man, I, that reminds you of Germany every time, like the schnitzel or pretzels or what was it? Beer? <laughs> I mean, yes, all of, all of the above, I guess. But, um, I think probably what shaped my like future the most is just that, um, opportunity to go and like be completely independent and um kind of like face a little bit of my anxiety about like leaving my family and my friends and um 
my then boyfriend, but now husband, uh, and just kind of figuring it out on my own, being by myself. And yeah, I think it's kind of in- informed some of my future challenges. Yeah, going for it. I love it. But, uh, yeah. was, was that the first time you'd really left Pacific Northwest? Like, what was that whole timeline and what made you go PNW down to New Orleans? Like, was there a specific reason? Was it like LSU, the Tigers? What was going on? Uh, no, I, well, my family, my dad's side of the family is originally from New Orleans. So I'd been here a lot. Uh, it was, it, it was a home away from home, but far enough from home that it, uh, felt like I was making progress, I guess. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Well, I, I'm curious, like you've obviously get exposed to crazy conditions in this sort of rowing. Like you said, not flat water. You're not on a kind of controlled body of water. You have a craziest experience traveling to these events that you look back on, whether it's with Horizon Racing or any other organization, like are you like you're like, well that was that was close or that was lucky. Yeah. Um so I guess like my so there's two kinds of coastal rowing. There's beach sprints, which is a five hundred meter out and back sprint you run on the beach you jump in the boat you slalom around uh buoys you do a 180 turn and you come back and run to the finish line so it's like it's crazy <laughs> it's yeah. like the weirdest rowing event so un unrowing um and that's kind of uh how i got into coastal rowing um so i made the beach sprint national team in 2021 in the mixed quad and we went to Portugal, where we ended up winning the bronze medal at the Beach Sprint World Championships. Uh, so that was definitely very memorable. It was really the the best outcome. Um, I had pretty much zero expectations, so it <laughs> definitely was a, a lifetime highlight, I'd say, of my rowing career. Um, and then. I guess probably the second most memorable experience is coming back the next year and um, not making the team after having such a a high from the year before. Um, My, it was basically like a series of unfortunate events that led to a knee injury, an error that just completely um, took us out. So um, that was memorable and arguably more, a, a bigger learning experience than winning the year before in Portugal. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sorry to hear first off, obviously those injuries happen and you're probably stronger for it now than you were back then. Right. Definitely. Yeah. I, I, you, winning is a lot of fun, but you learn a lot from losing. It's a reoccurring theme here that we uh, have established on the athletes podcast. Was that also, before you won U.S. Rowing Female Athlete of the Year of the Year Beach Sprint, um, that was in 2021. So that was following our win in, gotcha. in Portugal. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. So that was a big year. Um, that was no big, a little COVID. It was year. it was a big year, and it was really like at the time I didn't realize like how it was like it was like a, the unicorn year. Like mm-hmm. we literally, I'd never been. This was my first national team. Um, I me and my husband, we were like, Hey, let's, let's try to like do, let's do beach sprint national team trials. Like that'd be fun. Oh, and we, we like, we did and we won and we were like, Oh, I guess we're on the national team. Now we're going to Portugal. Um, meanwhile, I have a one-year-old <laughs> like, I was like, okay. Um, and then we end up going and meddling also at the world championships that really, set my expectations very high um and it turns out that's kind of a rare sequence of events to to do um so yeah but the the fall back down to earth the next year was was uh hard (laughs) wait you mean it's not normal for you to pick up a sport and become arguably the best in the world at it within like 365 days weird (laughs) right right like uh we it was it was a whirlwind (laughs) yeah i I can only imagine i mean do you think that you had some maybe 
expectations or you had seen success in the tech space you're like oh i can apply this to athletics too was it just like a natural progression or where did you kind of have that confidence instilled was it your parents growing up or like because i mean going in there at the university level is audacious to just say hey i'm going to do this after not like you said in elementary school not really having or finding your sport yeah i guess the part of what made the success i think was just how i i was really relaxed about it the first year it was like mm. i really had a like you know this is really cool i feel so grateful to be able to be competing at this elite international level when i am kind of like an outlier in the world of rowing like as a mom like there are i would i think that year was, and i can't even name any other female mothers who are currently competing wow. for the u.s on the national team um helen glover from the uk though like she's like okay my idol she, she had twins and uh a single kid between olympic cycles and went back and meddled at the olympics so dang that's all right. that's that's like next level but uh in the u.s i definitely am an outlier i didn't feel like i i really had a like i'm i'm just happy to be here kind of feeling mm -hmm. um and i think that actually helped me a lot because uh as soon as i start feeling that pressure and expectation i I seem to struggle and that's something I'm trying to work on. It's probably a good lesson for athletes listening to think about and be cognizant of like, Hey, there's probably benefit to not building something up and putting a ton of pressure on yourself and stressing out about what could be or what couldn't be if you don't perform exactly how you should. Um, it reminds me of Mitchell Hooper, who we featured on the 165th episode, I believe he just won world's strongest man um, two days ago. He won Arnold's a couple weeks prior to that, right after we recorded. And one of the things that he talks about is the fact that, hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it as best as I can. But at the end of the day, being a strong man doesn't define him. He values being a good human being, working hard, his effort. And like, I think that's kind of probably where you fell in line as well as, hey, I'm going here. I'm doing the best that I can and I'm not going to put pressure on any more that's already there because there is enough as it is, right? Totally. I, I, and I think part of my problem the coming back the year after is I, I kind of embodied that like, hey, you know, like, we're world medalists, like, we can do this, like, it, this is our thing. And then you go and you don't perform to your expectation. And it wasn't even a, um, it was like all these factors that were just out of our control. It was so, so frustrating. And you walk away and you're just like heartbroken and you like lose a piece of your identity almost because you've built up this idea of like who, who you are like. Um, and so what's kind of helped me is like stepping back and being like, no, you know, I have so many other things that are important. Like I've got my daughter, I've got my job, I've got my, my husband who competes with me and like we're in this together. and. Mm -hmm getting that perspective and stepping back and reframing with kind of the big picture has helped me a lot. And that's what I'm going into this year with that mindset. Yeah. I love that. I think it's so important. And like, I don't know, you, you said it perfectly there, it, but it isn't a traditional path to elite coastal rowing, elite athletics in general, really. Like, can you talk about what it's like balancing being a mom, an entrepreneur, an athlete, maybe some of the challenges and the benefits that are associated with it? Yeah, um, I think kind of a traditional path is like you you row um, in college, you probably have been recruited to college to row like at a at D1 school and then you go to a high performance team and you spend years trying to make the national team and the Olympic team and all of that. And I didn't do any of that. Um, and I think in a way the coastal rowing it's it's special because that opportunity exists because it's kind of a newer sport and um it's it fits with with that there isn't really that path yet mm -hmm. so that worked well with kind of like my my life of 
I've got all these different things that I'm juggling and like, why not throw coastal <laughs> rowing in, in there? Um, but as far as like balancing kind of trying to like have this elite athletics career and being a mom, I have found that it is really challenging. And I think that just rowing and probably all sports have a long way to go in supporting women who are wanting to start a family, but also not wanting to like hang up their, hang up their coat with their athletic careers. Mm -hmm. Um, In rowing in particular, just it's not set up to empower women to do both. Mm. I think it could be. I think a lot of women are definitely kind of struggling between the idea of like, I'm still super, super competitive in my 30s. Yet, like, this is also the time I need to start thinking about like, what are my like long term goals as far as my family? Right. Um, So I, I hope to be like, one of my goals is to change that. Like, I hope when my daughter is my age, she's not like, Ugh, like I either have to retire or I, or I have to like decide that I don't want to start a family. Mm. So. <clears throat> I think you're doing it right now by talking about it on the show. Right. And like having open conversations and bringing awareness to it at the end of the day, like no one knows what everyone's going through and you have clearly a lot on your plate, probably most than more than 99% of other people but you're managing, right? And you're getting it done. And <clears throat> I think that's a testament to who you are, your hard work, your perseverance. But I think also you're going to be able to prove it to your daughter and to other females going through it that, hey, this is possible. You got to pull up your boots and get after it sometimes. And I mean, maybe you've got some stories there about like what you've had to do. I'm sure I know within the tech corporate startup space, you probably had to pull some long nights. You're probably training. Like, how do you... I guess maybe because we're on the athletes podcast, I'd love to hear like your training, nutrition, routine, how you ensure that you're staying, you know, well rested, getting that recovery. Are you tracking via like a whoop strap or how do you make sure you're, you're staying fit and up to date and uh, primed for performance? Yeah. Um, that's really interesting. Cause I feel like, those are the places that like really get hit when you're trying to be when you're trying to be like at your optimum performance but you also are like dealing with a toddler Mm -hmm. um and uh it's it is it is hard to know that like i'm waking up in the middle of the night because my three-year-old has to pee while like my competitors or my peers in the sport are like trying to get in the green zone on their whoop. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, how am I ever going to be equal? Um, so that can be really frustrating. And that's kind of why I've like stepped away from tracking and that kind of thing, mm-hmm. because I don't want to give myself that mental pressure and like, I guess, remind myself that I'm not in control. Yeah. If you, if you know what I mean? For sure. um, so, I don't, I, I don't track sleep. I don't track nutrition. Um, I try to like really be very intuitive about everything and um, just, I guess, mostly give myself grace. I'm, I've got a lot of things I'm balancing. And if I lean into one thing too much, then I'm going to feel like I failed. So I've got to, give myself a break. <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, hey, if anyone deserves a break, it's you from the sound of it. Uh, you got a lot on the, on the go. And I think like it's different stages, right? I'm sure during your school years, you were probably looking at that and saying, you know, Hey, maybe this isn't something that I'm going to be doing long term, So I'm just going to go try it quickly. And then it's like, Oh, I actually love this sport. I'm going to stay and do it for the rest of my life. And that, that is kind of what the whoop it's like, it's an accountability partner. And if, you know you're not going to be able to get that sleep because of that three-year-old. Why would I even bother looking at that bad data to say, ah, yeah, I know I got up for 15 minutes. Um, I'm not at that stage of my life yet, fortunately. Uh, (laughs) Not to say I won't enjoy it one day, but 
Um, I'm going to take as much sleep as I can get right now in the meantime, because uh, I know from hearing doing this for the past three and a half years, there's a lot of importance to it. Um, do you put any importance on, like, I'm always curious, athletes, entrepreneurs, high performers in general, they prioritize certain things, they make their lists, they're organized, they have their routines. Are there specific things in your day to day that are like, I know if I do this, I'm gonna end up doing this later on in the day and it's gonna set me up for success. For me, I like to work out early in the morning. It sets my day up. I make better choices from food. I drink more water. So it's like that first domino to fall that lets me be successful throughout my day. Do you have that yourself? Yeah, I definitely, um, I'm a, I'm an organizer and a planner. I have a hundred lists and, you know, like personal Trello boards. Like I am like, I, I think the way that I can stay on top of all the different things that we're, we're doing right now is just like through like organization. And I try to set as good of routines as I can. I, you know, drop my daughter off at school work out um, and I've got kind of like this routine that, and if I do stray, then I am like a little bit like frazzled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess being, it's just like that organization element that is pretty key to the way I'm doing everything. And it doesn't, it is not perfect. Like uh, we, you know, one, one little thing like, oh, and my daughter's sick now I don't have childcare, like now everything's ruined. Um, and I have to like, try to like get away from that. Like it's all ruined mentality. Uh, the week before, so we had US trials for the world beach games three weeks ago. Um, and me and my husband were competing in the mixed double. And the week before we left to go to trials, my daughter like had like 104 degree fever. I think she had like hand, foot and mouth. I don't know. It's like a toddler thing apparently okay. um she had a she had a virus and she was like super sick up all night week before trials and like i was i was starting to spiral i was like oh my god like this is the worst thing that could happen like literally i mean up all night like we're probably going to get whatever this weird virus is <laughs> and like it's ruined like all the work we've done the last like year leading up to trials is ruined and like for me like my husband is like a huge help and everything and he he competes with me so like we were on the same team in portugal at beach sprints and we uh were racing together at trials in the mixed double um and he's like you've already put in the work like this is our life you just need to accept it you can't control this so just control what you can control drink a lot of water like if anything, just drink, drink more water and you know, you'll probably be better off for it. <laughs> do you guys, uh, do you, are you guys taking any supplements specifically while you're doing your training routines, like anything in particular to stay healthy? Yeah. Um, we, so when I was actually working at a startup incubator here in New Orleans, I, um, worked with a company called 4D clean energy. And, uh, I guess I became like a, a huge advocate like i was like volunteering for them but i literally have taken it every single day in the last like 15 years since i oh. worked with that company so huge shout out to them um they're they're awesome it's like a, a a family here in new orleans who've started this company so awesome um, yeah, yeah and i got my husband on it too so we're we're definitely <laughs> definitely advocates for that i love it well we work uh, with rooted they're the sponsor for uh our episodes here you know of it so we'll send you some of that get you some rooted yeah, in there as well love to try it <laughs> it's uh i love trying new things learning from people on the show as well because each person might have something unique that's just a little bit different that might help me a little bit maybe now maybe down the road and more importantly it'll help everyone listening right like that's the coolest part that i find being able to share these stories incredible individuals like yourself hannah when you look back on what you've experienced so far in your career of rowing, is there a moment that stands out outside of that winning moment? Like being able to share it with your partner is probably incredible. Like, are you guys able to maybe expand on the relationship because you're training and working together? Is that like a, can you like maybe 
include that as a date night every once in a while so you don't have to go out on dates or how do you manage it? Yeah, no, it, I feel so lucky to be able to share one of my biggest passions with my partner. Like we, I, it, I mean, it can be hard. Like we live together, train together, raise our daughter together, work together. We're starting a new business together. We uh, sometimes maybe need to like not be together, but it really is so special to be able to like share something that you love so much and um, with your partner. And not even just like when we win, but being able to share like the heartbreak when we lose. I think when when that happens, it uh, I have found a whole new meaning in it mm. um, because we it was it was a really good way to be like you know yeah we lost this thing that we're training for that's supposed to make us happy in the end like we don't get paid to row like mm-hmm. rowing is not a <laughs> financially like lucrative sport uh, for anybody um, but we. I, it was it was like so comforting to be able to be like you know what like let's pick ourselves up together and he was a huge piece of what helped me overcome that um disappointment as as we tried to rebuild after trials last year and we ended up going to the world championships for the distance race which is a different discipline of coastal rowing um and i rode the single and like i could never have done it without his support like he was my boat handler like literally pushing me off the start line um when i ended up rowing the i was in the b final at the world championships and he like told me right before he was like this is your race like you like go learn how to win it's a b final relax this is your race let's learn how to win and i like literally the whole race i was thinking that and i felt really good you know coming in the finish line being like i did this for him yeah I, and that's so cool to be able to for him to be able to share that with you i'm sure as well like he appreciates that uh i think i i don't know there was alex Hermosi or from the my first million podcast that they shared like divorce rates of couples that start businesses together are like less than 10 percent. i think it was sitting at somewhere around six percent interesting which is like huh. exponentially better than the 50 plus percent <laughs> right right, right yeah. so uh, uh a little fun fact if you want to stay together maybe start a business uh yeah there we go <laughs> i mean maybe it's just the sunk cost and you're like yo i've put so right. much it's in like, i don't want to get this out this would be way too hard right <laughs> either way uh you know it's a thought put it out there but and it's obviously working for you guys it's cool to see uh, tell me about the, the mindset that you're bringing into 2023 though. I know you touched on it. Like, you know, you're focusing on the positives, that gratitude piece, but like trials last month, upcoming races, how are you feeling? How's how are the vibes? Yeah. So, um, I'm taking everything I learned from last year and kind of, I'm excited to find the successes, even when I, when it, we don't accomplish like the ultimate goal like i feel super content with however we finish because i've um i guess that, like i've stopped focusing on the end goal because i know like that first year when we when we accomplished like more than we could have dreamed that was the unicorn so i've stopped i'm like that's not even in my head i'm thinking about like you know what i had a great workout today um it was super beautiful out we're in mississippi and the um the conditions were challenging and it was fun and like how lucky am i to be here so i'm like trying to like be so much more process oriented um and not even think about the bigger goal and even when i do think about the bigger goal like go the start line like that's my goal and to be there and be relaxed and feel just like really I guess I'm kind of like going for a, I'm just happy to be here kind of vibe. <laughs> and I like, I have other really big plans on the horizon. Um, so I feel like right now I'm working on these, like, it's not like my, my last step before that, but I'm just enjoying where I'm at. Yeah. And that's, that's so important. Like, uh, something I'm trying to work on right now. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I, I, uh, if you got any tips, <laughs> let me know. Uh, n- because I, I mean, I think 
we probably share the same, we're probably hard on ourselves. There's always that desire for more expectations, you know, surrounding of everyone else seeing success. You're wanting to not necessarily compare or compete, but just you want to continue to build your brand as well of who you are, what you're doing, what you're capable of. Um, there's a quote from someone that talks about how comparison is the thief of all joy. How do you eliminate that so that you're not comparing yourself to others who are not having to worry about kids or who aren't training as a professional athlete and who are just focused on being a CEO, COO and yeah. building an org? Um, yeah, I guess like the, the thing I'm trying to do is step back and really just be grateful for all of the things that I have. Um, like, it really is a great um, way to put things in perspective to like have a happy, healthy three-year-old and watch her just, you know, finding joy on the playground. Like she wakes up and she's like, wow, I wonder if today, like there's gonna be anybody I could play with on the playground. And like, that would be amazing. And it's like, okay, you know, like, yeah. like can I make her happy today? Yeah. Is that is that the most important thing? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, perspective, right? I think uh, similar with a, having a golden golden retriever around, same thing, right? Like exactly, and know, pre probably can... pretty similar to a three year old. Like <laughs> I always like to try and tell capacity people... <laughs> wise. Right? Uh, I always try and tell people I'm like the human version of a golden retriever. Like I'll come up, say hi to you, maybe won't lick you, but like you know, I'll try and give you a pat or something. Like because I, I think that's more that, that you can do that in your day bring that kind of three-year-old mentality of it's just positive joy excitement like this is all new to me i have no idea what's going on like and just embracing life for what it is every day um i think chris cook talked about it who's our last episode and he talked he shared like man we take life so seriously nowadays and he was born with no legs no arms he's done 13 marathons now to date on a longboard like absolutely ridiculous what he's been able to accomplish in his life and i think like his motto is if i can chris and he's got an incredible story and i think you're basically sharing that right and if it's like if you can bring that mentality every day uh, it's a pretty incredible life that we're able to live like you kind of you don't have anything to lose if you if you truly are enjoying what you're doing then it's that even if you fail like you, if you enjoyed the process then it can be a success right like yeah. reframe it it like look what you accomplished being able to get there so it's kind of like where i'm trying to go yeah I, i'm uh i think more people should hopefully follow in your footsteps and follow along that journey with you where where'd you get it from like was this something that was instilled in you from parents is this reading books do you just think that it's experiences over time that have like kind of peeled back that layers of the onion and you're like, okay, this is what I got to do now. Or where'd that come from? Um, I don't know, I guess, uh, yeah, I'm like, my family is, I'm super connected with my family and, uh, they're not athletes at all. So I'm the oldest of five. Uh, my siblings like literally could care less. And I think also my, my, parents and even um my like husband's family like they all like support us like 100 percent. but like oh that's too bad like maybe next time i'm like no like i'm like 34 like i don't i only have like a couple years left like this is it yeah uh, and her so, like, husband just keep going on these races once a year i don't know right it's like on. oh you're going to peru next month like oh why i'm like well we're racing at the american cup like it's kind of a big deal but <laughs> can you watch our cats? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, awesome. So like they definitely bring us down to reality pretty like, you know, that that's a, a good way to remember that like you get so focused of like, Oh my gosh, like this is to matter so much. Like everybody cares. And it's like, Oh no, like most people literally don't care about like beach sprint trials. Like this is such a niche thing um, that like, even our families don't really understand it. So do it for ourselves. Yeah. And if we isn't can have fun doing it, then. Isn't that <laughs> wild though, that like you can have 
thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who are invested into a sport, interested in a weightlifting. I look like strongman, I think of as an example too, because it's recent and it's like people go crazy over this stuff and they will travel miles and spend thousands of dollars to be able to witness these events and activities going on. And it's like, man, this is just a guy over there picking up a big heavy <laughs> log and putting it down or like it's just a girl riding a board. Like when you break things down, it's like, wow, why do we do these things? But it's like I posted it earlier on my uh, LinkedIn today, actually, and it was talking about Wrexham FC and the way that Ryan Reynolds has been able to basically supercharge that franchise with another celebrity owner. And like people follow when you're doing something incredible and they have a desire to be a part of the journey, right? Uh, that kind of leads me into what our next uh, mm -hmm. big adventure is, which um, we are doing some ocean rowing. And I think that's kind of like, that hits the nail on the head. Like we're finding that people like think it's so insane that they're like, like, how do I follow? Like, what do, like, how can I get involved? Like, I, I just want to like see some, a person do this. So, um, yeah, I think, I think there is like an element of people just being interested in watching other people do crazy things. Yeah. And it's like that, that ability to almost live vicariously through someone without actually having to do all the hard work or like put in all the effort is, uh, something that a lot of people, are able to do now because the this social world we're living virtually through these individuals and you're one of them right like and it, you should share what this incredible ocean adventure is going to look like everyone involved uh, brands people like what well, what's it looking like what's it shaping up to be hannah yeah so um and for the record i would not be doing this if i hadn't failed and experienced failure i would not have signed up to row across the ocean so good preface um <laughs> what i'm doing is i'm going to be rowing across the pacific ocean in 2024 uh in a rowboat uh unsupported and we're going to row from california to hawaii and try to break a world record how the heck are you going to do that <laughs> um it is a long journey to the start line uh, we're learning that more and more every day uh, as far as just fundraising, training, learning about navigation and all of these things. Um, but basically it's a, we're a four person team. It's a mixed team, two men, two women. We're all uh, kind of elite rowers, elite coastal rowers. Um, and we are in this 29 foot ocean rowing shell. It's got two cabins on each side um three rowing positions and we basically row non-stop for 30 to i guess it could be up to like 60 days <laughs> just depends uh, on where the wind's blowing eh yeah yeah it out of our control which is part of what's like fun but also like scary it's gonna be the adventure of, of a lifetime <laughs> yeah i'm uh i'm kind of hoping selfishly that you attach a gopro or something on top so we can watch it uh, i'm sure there'll be some live live shows uh oh yeah what's the inspiration behind like cali to hawaii what's what's the desire yeah so we're doing it as part of a race actually so it's called the world's toughest row and it's uh um, there will be like 20 other boats competing with us and all in different categories, like a, all, all female, all male, we're doing a mixed. Um, some might be like three person boats, two person boats. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the race. It's from Monterey to Kauai. What's um, the 2,800 miles. What's the world record right now? The world record for the mixed four, which is our category is 56 days. Um, and there there's a race this year with the world's toughest row with mixed teams that i'm pretty sure are going to break that so we're hoping to do it and like our goal would be 30 days but uh probably 30 to 40 days depending on the weather yeah you just figured you'd cut it in half you'd be like there's world record let's snipe that in half yeah. we'll do it. no problem i i feel really strongly about our team i know where it like it really like to me it feels like the dream team mm -hmm. um uh and it's called horizon racing usa is our team name and um we've got a weird group of different people who are all like 
really united um, in a different way. Like we're all super competitive. We're all rowers. We all like just match in a weird way. And I, I think we're, I think we're, I think we're going to do it as long as, but there could be a hurricane and that's out of our control. And in that case, I'll be like, you know what? We failed, but yeah, like, we're alive. It was fun. We were alive. We're like, or hopefully we're alive. Yeah. I don't know. Like, right. Uh, no, I think part of like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm already positioning myself to be like, it's okay if we don't get our world record goal, because we've got these other reasons for doing it. One reason we're doing it is for we're doing it to support a charity that we all are uh, super supportive of. It's called Loria Sport for Good, um, and they are a grant-making organization that helps promote the, the power of sport to create social change. So that's one reason we're doing it. And then we all have personal reasons we feel like we should row across the ocean, yeah. too. That's amazing. Uh, you you want to give a little bump to the rest of the team members uh, out there? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've got Hunter Duell. She is a California native, and she rode D1 at Cal. She is, like, a very bubbly and just really, like, bright person. Like, she's going to be super fun to be with for 30 days when we have – uh n nobody else around and uh she's actually a video producer for a rocket ship company so like okay that's like when you're like a kid and you're like oh, i want to here's my dream job like she literally has that dream job um she's like so... a rocket video scientist <laughs> yeah like she like takes videos of rockets right like uh so cool so um super excited to be rowing with her uh we've got will will meeker he's from dc he's a banker he's probably one of the most competitive people i know nice. um and then we've got phil who phil hoyle he's he our self-proclaimed proclaimed old guy but he's that's his thing is being the old one um but he's just like the most badass person you'd ever meet and when I told my husband I was like I kind of want to do this thing where I row across the ocean um he was like I don't want to do it but you should ask Phil to do it because call he's Phil the thrill he was like call Phil like Phil will do it and and I think like really deep down like John my husband was like if I'm not going to be there like I trust Phil with your life so um yeah. And Phil was like, sure. <laughs> Everyone trusts Phil, apparently. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like 30 seconds there. Was that, uh, how did that feel when the hubby said, no, Hannah, I'm not going? Well, someone's going to take ask, care of the kid. I didn't ask him to come. <laughs> so oh, uh, no. he's, let's just say he's more of a sprinter than a 30 days at sea kind of guy. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, we all have our strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> right, right. No, I, ultimately we need someone to stay home and, and man the ship at home. Um, and it is also not, I mean, we're going to, be putting in every possible safety precaution, but it is an extreme sport. And um, I guess like there's a reason Air Force One and Air Force Two do not uh, or exist, you know, yeah. like, so uh, yeah. Fair enough. Try that. Hey, that's a, uh, I've loved the past 48 and a half minutes getting to know you chat, learn a bit more about your story, Hannah. Um, the way we wrap up every episode is we ask our guests what their biggest piece of advice would be for the next generation of athletes. Before I do that, is there anything else you want to leave listeners with anywhere you want to share for people to follow along to your journey so that they can stay up to date on what Hannah Hoppy and her husband are doing? Yeah. Um, definitely like, uh, follow us on Instagram. That's kind of where we like post everything. Um, horizon racing USA, it's our ocean rowing Instagram, horizonracingusa.com is our website. We will be posting a lot of our training and everything that goes into uh, what it takes to cross the ocean um, there and it should be pretty, pretty cool to follow. So definitely we would love the support. 
Yeah, I'm super excited. I'm amped for it. Uh, it's going to be an incredible adventure. I'm sure you're e- eager to say the least, and uh, you've got a, a ton of time to prepare for it, so it's going to be exciting to follow along that training. Um, biggest piece of advice for that next gen, Hannah? What do you got? Um, I think my biggest piece of advice is that your journey does not need to be the same as everybody else's um, for you to find success. Uh, Personally, I've had a very non-linear journey and not checked all the boxes that uh, you're supposed to. And it's actually been to my benefit. Um, So I encourage people, I encourage women to, you know, like, you don't need to choose between being a mom and being a athlete. Like, not that it's easy, but it's so worth it. So, Some wise words from Team USA rower, ocean adventure, gym advocate. We didn't even talk about Erga Gym. We're going to have to throw that into the <laughs> intro there. Like, you do so much. Uh, we could probably talk for hours. Not the first conversation. Many more to come, Hannah. I really appreciate your time uh, so, so much. And I can't thank you enough for coming on the Athletes Podcast. Thank you so much. This has been great. Thank you folks so much for tuning in to the 174th episode of the Athletes Podcast featuring Hannah Huppy. I was smiling from ear to ear just listening to her share her stories, experiences from the sport. Not a traditional way to get into elite sports and performance, but she's proven that you can go whatever direction you'd like. And as long as you're following your passion, you're going to be able to succeed and prove to everyone around you that you're capable of incredible things. That's a reminder for you folks listening. You too can do whatever you put your mind to and let us know down below what you're doing because we want to share more of your stories here on the Athletes Podcast. My name is David Stark, host of the show. Phoenix Wayland is our editor and producer and Jordan Maslin is our website and app developer. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Athletes Podcast. If you'd like to purchase a shirt or other merchandise, head on over to theathletespodcast.com. Use the code LI20. That's L-I-20 for 20% off your very own Rolo golf shirt. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Athletes Podcast. We'll see you next week for another incredible show. Bye.